Everybody. Welcome to Review Time with Islip. I am Islip, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Hot Soldiers HSO2 General Commander Sky Prop Pillar Supreme Commander. Part of their Big Pocket Wars trademark. And uh, yeah, this thing is really nifty. Take a look at the box real quick. Here you can see some of the other things. Hopefully, you can't see me in the thing, but. Some of the other figures that are in the line are going to be in the line. Uh, that's all the warnings and all that crap. On this side, you have Sky for Popper, for Popper Topper. And then on this side, you have him doing his thing. And uh, then when you look on the back, it's set up like a G1 box. Oh my god, that is so awesome. It's, it's a shame it's not uh, like a window that you can open up. But this is awesome. This is oh, this is this is this is this is definitely gonna go on the wall at some point. Definitely gonna go on the wall at some point. So there you see Sky Prop Mindander. They're optimists. We're gonna go with that. I don't know why I can't say the words with their with the little uh the little little armature unit that's inside sticking out the little hole. There you have robot and not robot mode. Here you have the inside opened up as a repair bay. And let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we got inside. And inside you get a clamshell with, with the little Optimus. Uh, the Matrix is supposed to go in there, but I already have it installed into Optimus. Um, I've actually had this thing outside the box for quite a while. Here's his trailer. This is a really nice looking setup. Here is the instruction booklet and the card. I haven't used either. That just actually stays in the box. Let's move that over. Let's go ahead and get everything out. We've got the trailer. We've got the Optimus. Little Energon Axe, of course. Ion rifle. The little drone, and it has wheels at the bottom. Uh, do they move? They don't move, but there's little wheels on the bottom. This actually is made to look like it can go backwards and forwards. Apparently, it happened in a G1 cartoon where the drone actually ended up at the end. And of course, we've got ourselves a little roller who does have a space for the gun to fit, so we can put the gun right there as we did do on pretty much every iteration of Roller and Optimus Prime. Okay, let's go ahead and move this on over and just adjust the camera. I didn't mean to zoom. Okay, and let's go ahead and give me a second. I'm gonna get this thing together. Um, it's not the easiest thing because of where the divots are. It's very hard to get this lined up if I'm honest. There we go. You can see it's pretty good. It locks in there. You can rotate it. It look it's actually set up like MP10 where there's two little slots. And uh, that's where you do all of that with. So let's bring this on a little closer so we can take a look at the details. And it looks pretty nice. It they've got it to transform without the stripe. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people say the stripe in truck mode is not cartoon accurate, but I've seen at least on two occasions where he did transform into a truck mode with the stripe. So the stripe is cartoon accurate depending on which episode you're looking at. So here we go. It has a lot of detail. You can already see a stress mark here. And that is one of my issues with this thing is on both sides in the exact same spot. I've got stress marks. Um, I don't know if they already had the stress marks or when I transformed it, it had the stress marks, but there are stress marks there. But I mean, you don't normally look at it, especially if you got it from this end here where you can see the matrix inside 
And uh, I'm kind of okay with that, but not at the same time. I mean, it's nice to see it, but I wish there would have been something in there um, that slid down during transformation at least so that that looks more like a, a truck interior, even if it was like a painted thing, something. Um, there it is from the underside. You've got spare tire. I didn't even realize that. These bits do fold out just like every other um, MP or every other truck. So we'll go ahead and pull the cab off so you can see that does work. And he has two little stands that do work. Actually, these open up here, but they don't touch the ground. They don't slide or anything. So they're they're pretty much useless. They're just kind of to help keep it from tipping over, I guess. So we've got that. The um, back does open up. It's a little tight. So what I normally do is I pull up on this part a little bit to try to, you know, get... There's a little notch at the top of each one of these that notches in there. So you can do that. And then... Get that opened and let's see. Uh, a legend size normal uh, won't fit in there, but the movie Bumblebees, Bumblebees, Bumblebee. Um, well, so th this thing it, it's a weird scale because the truck. Will also, my um, ramp doesn't go all the way down for some reason. But if you look, truck mode scales well with the movie Bumblebee line. But when you put it next to another Legends figure, you can see it looks like it's it's not in proper scale. Um, but when you transform it into robot mode, then it's in scale with some of the Legends figures, but some of the other figures that you thought would have worked won't work. It's, it's weird. It's like he's too small here, but too big in the other, other mode. Let's go ahead and pop this open. It's held together by pegs. Um, it's starting to get loose now, but it's a little scary trying to get these pegs open without breaking it. As you can see, there is... Hold on, let's raise up the camera. We have the interior, which is made up pretty much like the original G1. I wish I had it, uh, G1 out now, but original G1 with this thing here and a little control module here. And then you see here this raised area. That's where you put this guy. You plug him in like so. I mean, you can just slide them across, but you plug them in like like so. If I can do the like so. Come on, like so. You plug them in like so, and then you can raise it up. Move it around just as you did before. Okay, keep moving the camera. I'm sorry. There we go. And if you're hearing growling, I'm sorry, that's me. I'm hungry, but I haven't really eaten today. So, it rotates here. You can kind of swivel it here or pull it up and rotate it. It does rotate there. The arm moves. You can actually unplug it if you want to. It does turn here. You can rotate it. The little claw does not open. It's a fixed piece. And then this thing does this thing. Um, the little cockpit looks like it opens up. It does. It opens up and there's an empty space where nothing will fit. But you've got that. If you leave it up, you could probably get a... Titan Master in there. I'm gonna give me a second. Nah, it's too, it's too, it's still too big. But um, you can just have him hanging out over here if you want to. And here's the Dumblebee backwards. So it looks pretty nice. And then of course you can have roller in here if you want to somewhere. And. Uh, you can just kind of put that there. There's nothing you can really do with it. It doesn't store anywhere. Um, and that's that's for the most part it for this this thing. You can um, you can close it with this little drone thing sticking out, but you have to face it the opposite direction like this because of where the hole is. And then you can close it on up and have the little drone guy with his guns, which I don't know where the red came from, but it's kind of a nice little thing. And then you can have the drone sticking out if you want to. So I don't want to, but just give me a second to get it folded up so we can put it back together. And then we will go on to transformation. Okay. 
me forgot to put roll it back. I'll put roll it back later. So here we go. And what we'll do is we'll start here. And what you want to do is unplug these. They tab in. Unplug these pieces. They tab in right there. And then just swing it around to about there. And that's pretty much it. Untab. Wiggle it out a little bit in case you need to. Swing it around. And that's about it. And there's, I don't know if it really tabs in anywhere, but it, it did click like it did. So you've got that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and slide these pieces out like that. Bring these down. Flip that down. Flip this up here and fold that down and then rotate the hand. And there you go. You've got one arm done. And the second one is the same as the first. Go ahead and carefully bring this out. Flip this back and close that. Bring the arm down. Take, let's see if I can get it, that piece there. Fold that down like so. Rotate the hand around. Okay, and then we are going to, which, what are we gonna do next? Give me a moment, I haven't, transformed him very often. I like leaving him in one mode or the other. Uh, we'll go ahead and split the legs up. Let's go ahead and get the legs done. So fold the feet out, of course. Fold the feet out, of course. And then open these two flaps here. And then you're going to accordion the leg out. Kind of like, sort of like combine a wars kind of thing. You know, let's bring it out, push that in, close that up, and then you've got the legs fairly done. Now we have to take care of, let's go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and get the head out now. Bring the head like this. Bring this piece up, turn it around. Leave the back open for now. This will just make things easier. And then separate these bits. Rotate them like this. And try to get the arms out of the way. I'm gonna take this and rotate these around like so, and then push these up until it fits in like this. And then you're just gonna take this piece here in the back and just straighten it on out. And then do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and take this piece here, rotate it around, make sure you got this, make sure it's folded out the opposite way so that when you turn around it's, it's cleared. And just push it on up. Make sure you get it in there lined up correctly because if you don't, it won't go in. Okay, so we got that. And then again, bring these over like so, and they'll just kind of snap, snap. And then when you close this, you got a little bit of the, the truck bumper on the back, but you're, it, it still looks pretty clean. And you're gonna bring these bits down like so, and then rotate it around like that. And there you go. You've got your Optimus Prime. Let me go ahead and get him standing. Okay. And bring this up and bring him a little closer. And there we go. There we have. Uh, that's the fault of the table. The table is not level. So this thing actually stands pretty good. I did have to pull these bits down a little bit. They weren't all the way down like they were supposed to. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that did make a difference. All right. And there you go. Bob's your uncle and Optimus is prime. And he looks pretty good. He looks pretty good. I don't like the hands. Right off the bat, I'm going to say I do not like these hands. And I wish there was a way to pull them out and put some different hands in there. These things are just too, too, too blocky and static for me, as far as I'm concerned. But they do what they need to do. Before I go any further, let's go ahead with articulation. His head is on a ball, so you get a lot of movement. Rotates 360. The uh, antenna don't move. Uh, they're they're pretty nice and sturdy. Uh, arms are on a ball. They go in and out. They go like that. They rotate at the upper bicep. You get if you pop this joint open, you actually can get. Uh, well, no, can you get more? You can get slightly more than than ninety degrees. It's not the best. Um, it's not the best, unfortunately. It's a shame too because it looks like it should be able to bend more, but it doesn't. 
just the transformation. Uh, you do get kind of a waist, but it it's one of those where it's pinned at the back, so it looks kind of funny. Uh, legs can go, move your arms, legs can go about that far, so you get a sizable split. Uh, forward, that way, back you get an even better split. Looks like he's doing ballet. Um, you've got a mushroom peg for the upper thigh. You've got you've got a 90 degree bend at the knee and then for, for transformation, excuse me, you've got more of a uh, bend if you want to. It breaks the, the, what is the word I'm looking for? It breaks the sculpt and it's not necessarily the prettiest but it'll help you get some of those kneeling poses and uh, that's about it that's about it I don't think no nope, the stacks don't move so yeah that's about it so you can get some dynamic poses out of him if you want to but he's Optimus Prime mostly you want him in stoic static where where I'm Optimus Prime and you know you also can again put the, the gun in his hand it's a nice ion rifle it works really well and what did I do with this you can take this and it's just got a it's just got a uh, 3.5 millimeter peg and you just slot it into his his hand ouch that hurts it's um actually a lot harder plastic than like what came with the MPs and stuff so just keep that in mind but it does its job it makes it look like there's an energon axe on him so whoops we're good to go there I'm gonna take that off because I don't want it on there and if you're if you're lucky I don't know if this is just I got lucky or if everybody's comes with it but there is you do get a baggie you do get a baggie with a blue energon uh, a blue energon, a blue matrix. Let me get this stuff out. Okay, you get a blue energon uh, axe, which I do like. This actually, this looks a lot better. Even though I know it's not supposed to be blue, it just seems to fit better than orange. And then, oh, I almost forgot to show off the matrix chamber. There is a matrix chamber. Um, if I can get these open, there we go. He does have a matrix chamber with a matrix in it. The matrix does come out, and then if you want to, you can put the blue matrix in and it just there's a a peg there and two rectangular peg slots and you just kinda do that and then you can have them with a blue matrix if that's what you want I actually like the original matrix better because it looks like like the matrix of leadership from the movie so we're just gonna leave that in there but I do like this better and then you get believe it or not you get two Autobot symbols on on uh... whoops on little pieces of plastic and I'm not necessarily sure where they're supposed to go I think they're supposed to go on the trailer maybe because they're too big to go on Optimus's arms if I'm honest they're too big which I, I that's a repro label by the way you don't come with that sorry about that if they cause any confusion people get angry at me. you're not supposed to do it I do what I want to do you don't like my videos well sorry about that uh, somebody else don't, will probably have done it. But I think it probably is supposed to go on here somewhere. I'm trying to think where... Give me a second. Let's see. It should be up in the front, like about here. Like, I guess you're supposed to glue it on or something. I, I don't know if I want to do that. I think I'm going to leave it alone. But there's that. And... Uh, Let's go ahead and get some size comparisons going again. So let's go ahead and get him standing. Now, here he is with the current deluxes from from War for Cybertron Siege, and he's almost as tall as one of those deluxes. He's pretty darn big. Here he is next to. Uh, I forgot what his name is. Gears? Was it? Gears? I forget what your name is now. Windbreaker. Yes, Windbreaker. No, Wind Charger. Windbreaker. Wind Charger from. Is it Wind Charger? I think this is Wind Charger. From uh, Titans Returns, I think it was, or Power of the Primes. And you can see he's. Um, he's probably a little taller than he's supposed to be, but that's okay. I think that's okay. Um. Let's see. 
here he is next to the Legends class uh, Bumblebee movie Legion Optimus. I threw all that out because I don't remember which one he is. Here he is next to the Transformers hybrid stu uh, series uh, Optimus Prime, and he is a lot bigger. Let me let me go ahead and get here is here is I Gear not I Gear um, Iron Factories um, Bridge Watcher basically a uh, uh, shockwave and you can see how much bigger he is now I've got their Megatron and unfortunately their Megatron does not scale with this guy very well which sucks so I have to get uh, um, the mech fans fans toys version to have one that scales right um, the the iron factory Megatron that I did get does scale with this guy pretty well it's like slightly taller but not too much so uh, You'll be posing with him, and then I just got to get a Megatron for him. Okay, here we go with the details. So, here we are, and I wish I could get light into where his eyes are uh, a little bit better. It looks pretty nice. It's His eyes are a little far apart, but that sometimes they were in the, car, in the ca ca cartoon. So, I don't mind that. He's got nice... It's not picked out, but, you know, if this is going on cartoon accuracy then this is fine because it's showing just enough detail and the colors do look like like the um like uh the animation and if you look right here you can see that right there and right there there's a divot where there's like an, an opening where, where the slat isn't going across all the way uh, that's where you plug in the trailer but there is a lot of detail and i kind of wish that they had the little arrows and things picked out, but they don't. But that's okay, because it wasn't always picked out. Uh, here's Optimus from the back, and it looks it looks really good. I think that looks great. I don't even mind the one big screw there. I can probably paint it. They painted this part blue to match the like the toy and the animation. I mean, it cleans up pretty good. I mean, it still wheels on the side, but that's okay. I don't mind that. He still looks like a good Optimus Prime. And that's what I want. A good looking Optimus Prime. Uh, his feet do not, they, they tilt a little bit, but not as much as I would like for them to. That's okay. He has no ab crunch. That kind of sucks, but again, it is okay. Oh, let me zoom back out so you can see what I was doing. I was trying to get him into a stance of dynamicism, and he does pretty good. He does really good. Uh, I, one point of articulation that I didn't mention was that his his arms do swivel back a little bit, so you can get more of like puffing his chest out. You know, you can't do the the groin out thing like you can with some of the other primes, but um, but he is he is still pretty awesome. He will look great on your shelf. He's not bad to mess with either. He feels okay. He feels okay. Uh, the only thing I don't like really that I, I really have a complaint about are again those stress marks there which I don't know where they came from um, I think it's due to transforming this because this has to go up here like this. when you transform it, you have to push this this has to go up underneath so let me see if I can get that out again let me show you oops come on out okay when you're transforming him back into the truck, you have to make take this piece here, and it gets pushed until it's underneath there. And then you have to do this. So I think that that might be part of the problem. I don't really know what what would cause the stress on this. So, but um, yeah, it's not a bad figure at all. Other than that that stress mark and it doesn't have quite the articulation I was hoping it would have but uh, it still has a presence and it still screams Optimus Prime and you know not like just barely Optimus Prime this just screams I am Optimus Prime 100% you know my best Peter Cullen voice um, but that's that's about that there's nothing more I can really say other than uh, I, I think they did a great job. This is my first uh, first figure from this this uh, from 
hot soldiers. Whatever the case is, this, this company is doing a great job. I like it. And uh, that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I am Islip. Thank you for watching and ciao.